Good morning, everybody. Sorry, there was a slight delay there. Not uh, because there are gremlins, but because we have new Facebook. I'm not sure whether you've encountered that, but uh, things were not way where I anticipated them to be. Morning, everybody. I am Ali Board. I'm a mixed media painter, and this is Technique Tuesday. This is something that I do every single week. You may be watching it on Catch Up via my blog, or you may be watching it uh, on YouTube, or if you're watching live, good morning. And if you are watching live, please do say hello in the comments and I'll give you a shout out. Um, I'm just gonna pop over there now, see who's in the room. Uh, morning, uh, I was gonna say morning, Ali. Oh dear, it's been one of those mornings this morning. Morning, Lou. Morning, Ali D. Uh, Janice, good morning. Pauline, Christine, Lynn, uh, Jean, Helen, Fran and Hilary. Good morning, you are all very welcome. Don't worry if you don't wanna put anything in the comments, that's absolutely fine. I know that there are some of you out there that prefer to stay anonymous and that's okay with um, us. Yes, lots of people, good morning, Tony. Uh, lots of people saying that they're not thrilled with the new version of Facebook. We've had a few issues with it. We're getting there. Oh my goodness, just as I get used to something, they change it. It's not helpful at all, is it? Um, if you're in the UK, did you all have a lovely bank holiday weekend? I hope you did. I certainly did. I spent the day uh, with my husband and my animals yesterday, and it was just lovely, actually. A little bit of work done, but a lot of uh, being outside and enjoying the lovely weather that we're having down here in Dorset. Uh, who else have we got? Uh, uh, Janet, good morning. Sally, good morning. Jean. Jane, Margaret, uh, good morning Simone, Pat, Mary, oh gosh there's lots of you this morning all wanting to learn about watercolour pencils, Gloria, Anne, Jackie and Jilly, you are all astonishingly welcome. So what are we talking about this week? Uh, you may have seen yesterday a post go out, uh, every single week I set a theme of the week and um, yesterday I set it as watercolour pencils. There's kind of a few other things in there as well because I met the most beautiful husky puppy uh, on Saturday and couldn't resist taking a photo of him and I will share that photo with you. So here is Apollo uh, with my husband sitting in the background. It's a terrible, terrible photograph. It's a really shocking photograph. But um, what I wanted to do was to get Apollo's amazing blue eyes and those ears. Look at those ears. <laughs> They're just adorable, aren't they? So um, the piece that I'm going to share with you today isn't exactly uh, the final thing that I plan on doing with Apollo. But it's uh, a real a means to an end for me to navigate my way around the subject matter to kind of get used to the proportions of those giant ears and those amazing blue eyes. And because I've got a couple of demonstrations coming up where I need to be demonstrating in watercolour pencils, then I thought uh, this was a good place to start. So I hope that explains uh, my project. Let's uh, see what else is uh, going on this morning. Uh, lots of people talking about uh, Facebook and uh, yes, you can change back to the old one, uh, but unfortunately not for long. Uh, lots of people saying, hello, good morning, Patricia. Um, <laughs> yes, subtitles are always a challenge, Fran. Um, uh, yes, lots of people saying what a great expression. And no, he doesn't look amused at all, does he? I think mostly because he was having a camera shoved in his face. I think that was it. So let's take you to the overhead camera where you can see some of the things that I am playing about with this morning. So here is the, there's my little uh, piece of paper that reminds me to switch the microphone on. <laughs> Don't need that in shot, Ali. Uh, so here we have a selection of watercolour pencils. I'm just going to shimmy over to my left a little bit so that I'm in front of my uh, drawing board. And uh, there you have the start of my Apollo sketch underneath. But I'll talk more about that in a second. The first thing I wanted to talk about was watercolour pencils themselves. What are they? What do they do? What are the uh, pitfalls? What are the, the good things, bad things? All sorts of stuff. Uh, who else is saying uh, good morning? Uh, <laughs> Jean is saying the who stole my sausages look. That's brilliant. Uh, good morning, Carol. Good morning, Rosie. Uh, good morning, Vera, Anna, and uh, lots of Lindas as well. 
you're very welcome. So what is a watercolour pencil? I'm going to start with the most basic one. So this is a watercolour pencil made by Derwent, a very good pencil brand, a British pencil brand. For those of you who are not watching in the UK, you might not be aware of them. Up in the Lake District, and uh, this is what I would call a basic watercolour pencil. So the idea is that you sketch with it, you colour with it, you layer things up with it, and then you take a damp brush. So it does need to be damp rather than wet, and I'll explain more about that in a second. And then you can smudge that colour around. And if you've got good quality watercolour paper, and a relatively light touch, then most of those pencil lines should disappear. Let me just show you what happens if you're a bit heavy handed with them. So if you make some real definite marks with them and then you take a wet brush to them, you can hopefully see that it's actually quite difficult to get rid of those lines. So if you want it just as a colour rather than a texture, you can use it on its side. You can probably see I hold my pencil a little bit differently. I know some of you out there are really concentrating on your mark making at the moment, and this is a perfect example of it. So instead of using my pencil that way, I tip my hand over the top and I use the side of it to shade. And then that way, when I take my damp brush to it, I can blend out the majority of that texture and it just turns into a colour. Now, why have I said a damp brush and not a, a wet brush? Let me show you. If I do my shading with my pencil and then I take a brush that's really quite loaded with water, you can probably see that it's running, and I put that down, what tends to happen is that you're then managing the water and not the colour. And not that I want to uh, cast any aspersions of anybody out there. I don't know if you can see, but it looks like it sort of blows a hole in the middle of it. And what you get is a darker edge and a paler centre where sometimes you're probably going to want the colour just blended out. Let's just take a, a slight pause um, just so that if you are watching me live on Facebook, I can answer any of your questions. Good morning, Cheryl. Uh, Lou is saying, quick question, Ali, what is behind you to your left? It's lots of colours, like a colour wheel, but long ways. It, <laughs> Lou, it's the tablecloth on my tables. Um, I've had a rejig of the studio and uh, we're allowing private lessons back in the room again. So uh, I've had to have table coverings so that I can clean them after everybody. Geraldine, good morning. Gwenda, good morning. Thyra, hello. I've got pencils but haven't used them. I'm looking forward. Oh, bless you. You're very welcome. It's nice to have you here. So um, that's the sort of standard way of using them. The other way that you can use them is to use them like a watercolour palette. So you can make uh, kind of selections of colours on a scrap piece of watercolour paper. And then you can lift the colour off that little kind of colour palette and transfer it elsewhere, just like you would do a watercolour paint. So you can get some quite soft... Um, Results, that's the word I'm looking for this morning. And you're probably noticing that actually, uh, I'm not using kitchen roll today to regulate the amount of water. I'm using my hand. That is absolutely deliberate. It's so that I can gauge how wet my brush is. Sometimes when you've got a piece of kitchen roll and you tap it on the kitchen roll, it's very hard to tell how wet that brush is. But I've just developed this thing, you've probably seen me do it already this morning, where I swipe my hand over the top and then I know exactly how damp that brush is. It's a real kind of feel thing. I know that's not helpful if you're a beginner, but it's just the way that I work. I also know that some of you out there do not like getting your hands grubby. Never mind. <laughs> Can't be an artist and not have your hands grubby. So uh, that's why I control it like that. Now you might also notice uh, that just to the right of me, I seem to have three different kinds of pencil. <clears throat> and that is deliberate. Oh, I've got a frog in my throat this morning, excuse me. <clears throat> Deary me. There we go. <laughs> ah, lovely Carol's in the room. Good morning, Carol. Um, Patricia is saying, I've always had uh, problems with my pencils, so didn't use them. Thank you, Ali. I know straight away where I've probably been going wrong. That's fantastic. 
Um, Allegria, good morning from Wales. Uh, good, excellent. I'm glad I'm helping this morning. Always good to be helpful. So yes, sorry, I got distracted by people um, commenting, which is never a bad thing. Over here on my right, I have three different types of watercolour pencil. So this is the one that I've just been using. This is my Derwent watercolour pencil. Very good watercolour pencil. I would suggest that you get what you pay for with watercolour pencils. I have known people buy uh, really cheap ones and get on with them famously. I'm not saying that that's not the case. In my experience, those cheap pencils tend not to work in the way that I would like them to or don't have a nice rich colour strip. So the colour strip being the bit that isn't surrounded by wood. Um, you know, those of you who that follow my work, you know I like nice art materials. I just think it does your work justice. So you tell me which kind of brands you prefer. I would love to know. So that's the Derwent Basic Watercolour. Now this one um, up here, I know these are not the colours of Apollo. I, I get that. Um, but this is a new brand of watercolour pencil to me. This is the Faber-Castell Albrecht Dura watercolour pencil and I've not used these before I've got a watercolour pencil workshop coming up in uh, next week and I wanted uh, just to get a couple of them just to see how they fared against some of the others so um, I got uh, well I actually got colours that uh, are going to be applicable to the project that we're doing oh what an excuse to have to buy some purple pencils but uh, this one oh gosh I haven't got my glasses on uh, cold grey six uh, which I've got and this one which I think is called earth green mm, yes it is called earth green um, because we're doing an aquilegia in a class very soon and I wanted to get aquilegia colours and I wanted to compare them because I had read a piece about how the Albrecht Dura were a little bit superior to the Derwent watercolour I don't know whether that's the case yet I would be very interested to hear your views on that subject um, and uh, but it, when I've done my workshop, I will be able to deduce a bit more. Uh, Rosemary, good morning. Uh, Helen is saying her favourite is Karen Dash. Yes, um, I need to go find my Karen Dash ones, uh, Helen, because they are somewhere in the studio. But I have absolutely no idea where. Uh, Jean uh, is saying mine are Derwent, hardly used them. OK, well, hopefully this morning, Jean, this will help you a little bit. So we've got, just to recap, we've got the Faber-Castell Albrecht Dura pencils there and we've got the Derwent uh, standard watercolour pencils there. Um, Sally is saying, I agree, Helen, such fab colours. Now, uh, Sally, uh, I know very well and uh, I value both Helen and Sally's opinions on pencils because they work with pencils an awful lot. So uh, it's, uh, it's going to be interesting for me to, to do a comparison. Uh, Janet is saying, what are the dif uh, are there differences in what pencils are made based with wax oil How and how this varies how you use them? Yes, Janet, if we're talking about pencils as a whole, there are oil-based ones, wax-based ones, water-soluble um, ones, all sorts. And it's very difficult to sum up in a short Technique Tuesday. Perhaps I will put that on my list of things that I will demonstrate further. Would that be useful to everybody? Let me know. Tricia, good morning. Uh, Linda is saying that she likes the Albrecht Dura um, Faber Castell. Okay, this is interesting. We're having a good discussion. This is what Technique Tuesday is all about. I don't just want to sit here and preach to you about how to do something. I want to hear your experience too. Now down here in the bottom corner where you can see I've got a lot more pencils. These again are the Derwent ones, but these are the Ink Tense pencils. So now what's the difference between the Derwent watercolour and the Derwent ink tents? I will show you straight away. So it is just that they are much more akin to the intensity of an ink, hence the name. Um, and you will see, look at the strength of that colour. Isn't that incredible? Now you've probably seen me demonstrate with ink tents blocks before. This is the same type of medium, but in pencil form, so it's a bit more controllable. But look at the strength of that colour in comparison to the watercolour pencils. So I'm sure you can see that by comparison, 
in uh, my own work that I do ordinarily, you know that I love colour, you know that I love texture, and therefore the ink tents just have that little bit more oomph for me. That's not a very technical term. Look at that blue. Isn't that delicious? Um, I can't remember. What was that one? Was that peacock blue? That's peacock blue. And that one was called dark chocolate. And what I find interesting about the Derwent Intense is when you shade with them, you think, hmm, that's a bit disappointing. <clears throat> uh, particularly that peacock blue look. Okay, it's a nice blue, but it's nowhere near as beautiful as what it looks like when it's wet. So it's worth creating, go away fly, it's worth creating a colour chart of what they look like dry and what they look like wet. So, uh, who's saying, oh, Janet is saying that would be great. I will uh, stick that on the to-do list, Janet, um, and I will try to get it in a future Technique Tuesday. Christine is saying that would be helpful. Helen is saying that she loves ink tents, so is Pauline. Um, yes, Vera, they are amazing, aren't they? And uh, Anne saying, last used ink tents uh, when you use black paper to draw the poppy seed head. Yes, really good on black because they're, uh, they're quite punchy. So they show up really well. And Jean is saying she likes the look of the ink tents pencils. Excellent, that is what I'm here for, to test things out for you so that you don't waste your money. Now let's just uh, move quickly on to Apollo. I just wanted to share with you where I start an animal portrait and what I do. So let's take you back to my photograph. So here is the gorgeous Apollo. And uh, I only really wanted to do head and shoulders. And like I said, this is a terrible, terrible photograph. We talked about photography last week, didn't we? And I said to you that I was a terrible photographer. Now, <clears throat> there's a reason why this is a particularly terrible photograph. A, because Apollo, I think um, his owner Victoria said that he was 13 weeks old. So really wasn't enthusiastic about sitting still. It was done in a very dark room um, with my poor husband uh, in the background. It's one of my paintings in the background as well. This was not my house. This was uh, somebody else's house. And there's the painting of Pete in the background, uh, which you can see. So I didn't have an awful lot of time to capture the gorgeousness that is Apollo. So it was really just a snap on my phone, which I've then kind of brought back and I edited. In actual fact, this is the raw photograph, the photograph that I have messed about with in in order to create this drawing um, I've done a lot more work on in Photoshop uh, let me just pause ever so slightly yes you're absolutely correct uh, Lynn ink tents does work well on fabric and is washable Helen graffiti to worth a go if you like charcoal type drawing yes very good um, Linda is saying brought a tin of ink tents years ago and never used them the tin is now out thank you it's my pleasure so what have I done? The first thing that I have done is very lightly with an ordinary pencil, I have just kind of lightly sketched in things just to make sure that I know where the nose is. Uh, I've kind of put a few whiskers on. I was a bit undecided about whether to put a background in and then I reminded myself that this is not a painting, this is just a sketch. Yes, I am doing it on my beloved Saunders Waterford watercolour paper. But this is just an exploratory exercise to see where I'm going um, with it. Uh, Linda, Apollo is a husky, I think. I'm not entirely sure about that. Somebody tell me if, uh, if I've got that wrong and I forgot to ask, but I'm pretty sure it's a husky or a Malamute. I can never remember. Anywho, uh, so the first thing I'm doing, uh, more because I want to experiment with this Albrecht Dürer pencil, is you can probably start to see I've started to expand on uh, Apollo himself and I've started to put some um, shapes and uh, kind of map out a little bit more where I want things to go. Now what's brilliant about this method is that I can draw back over the graphite so with this colour one of the reasons I chose this colour was because it looked graphite like it's a coincidence that it's the perfect colour for Apollo I can just map things in, start to acquaint myself with uh, where things need to be on Apollo. It was this that I really wanted to get in and measuring the difference between how high an ear is. Because, let's take you back to that photograph, his ears are astonishingly big. He needs to grow into them, I feel. I feel that he was given ears the correct size 
but he's yet to uh, attain them. <laughs> so I was doing some measuring between the photograph of how long that ear was in comparison to everything else and I decided that the ear was the same size as from the top of his nose. Can you see that? That kind of length. And those associated shapes are really, really important to get right. So I will make my way around with the Albrecht Dürer cold grey watercolour pencil and I'm not really going to do an awful lot of work on the eyes today. That's a Technique Tuesday for another time. All I'm doing is working out uh, how I'm going to get the proportions of Apollo in. Now, I think I just saw Janice saying, Ali, can you glaze with ink tents? Yes, you can. And glazing is something I'm going to talk about in just a second. It is tricky to glaze with them and glazing, I think Janice means it in this uh, respect, is to kind of layer up the colour, layer over layer. They are fantastically strong, so you will find that tricky to do. The great thing about ink tents is that when you have wet them, uh, they dry waterproof. So you can uh, layer it up very easily without disturbing the colour, it's just that the colour is really strong. Uh, Cheryl, what Cheryl saying, have a set of uh, Faber-Castell but never really use them, so excited to give them a go. Excellent. Yes, Lynn, Ink Tense does work on silk. Uh, Nicola, no, sorry, that's uh, your internet, not me, my lovely. Um, all sorts of, lots of uh, comments coming in about using them on fabric. Now, I've put a little bit of uh, grey down on Apollo. And what I'm going to do now is just very quickly go back in with that damp brush to move some of that colour to start to get some shading on him. And this way I can start to work on the three dimensions of him without having to worry too much. It's a lovely, soft, easy way of getting the shape of your animal in without having to overcommit. So all I'm doing is taking that damp brush, you can see wiping it through my hand. I've got the photograph up in front of me and all I'm doing is shifting that pencil a little bit. I'll hold it up to the camera in a second so that you can see a bit more of it. Um, obviously this is something that would need a lot more work. I was just itching to get Apollo onto a piece of paper and test out these uh, new watercolour pencils as I go. So I'll do those last little bits around the eye. So you can see it's a nice, easy way in of getting an animal portrait. So if you don't want it to look as chalky as perhaps a pastel pencil or a pastel stick portrait might look, a watercolour pencil just in a single colour is a lovely way of getting some tones, getting some shape into your animal portrait. So uh, let me hold that closely up to the camera. Let's get my head out of the way. And then you can see how I've got some nice soft tones and it gives me a basis for the rest of my drawing. Now, I'm going to be doing uh, a little bit more of this later on today in uh, my Zoom demonstration that I have. Those of you who have signed up for the how to use Zoom, I'm going to be using this uh, for a demonstration this evening so you'll see a little bit more of it. I will try to work on it in the next few days um, but I do have uh, quite the teaching schedule ahead of me this week so if I don't get to it I do apologise. It will just go into my currently working on folder and I'll pull it out another day. It'll be fine. Not everything has to get finished in the one session. Let's have a look at what uh, comments are coming in. Uh, Linda is saying, have Caran d'Ache luminance coloured pencils. Can you use those in any way with your other watercolour pencils? You know what I'm going to say to you, Linda, don't you? <laughs> I'm going to go experiment and see what happens and then share it on the Learning to Paint page. I'd love to see what you come up with. Um, Lynn is saying, using aloe vera gel reduces bleeding. Every day's a school day. I need to try that. Thank you for that, Lynn. Um, oh, Helen has replied to Linda. You always work on top of watercolour with ordinary coloured pencils after it's thoroughly dry pastel pencils too. Um, lots of people being really helpful. Thank you for those of you who have watercolour pencil experience. 
uh, for uh, kind of lurking in the background today. It's really helpful. Thank you very much. Um, I do hope that you are continuing to stay safe. This video will go up in the blog with um, what I might do is post a photo of Apollo as well so that you can see exactly what I've been working on. But uh, until next week, um, I haven't decided what we're doing for Technique Tuesday next week. Um, no, haven't decided. Uh, let me know if you have any more ideas for Technique Tuesday. You know I love to hear from you. But until I see you again, see you next Tuesday. Take care, everybody. Bye.